I'm Travis with Subsurface Solutions. I'm here with the uh, radio detection guru, Ken Wright. He's going to explain the ground penetrating radar systems, the 1100 and the 1500 series, and this video will help us understand the differences and the different levels uh, that they have to offer. And so we're out here with the 1500 unit right now, and we're gonna go through some of the, uh, um, a light version, a light demo of uh, what it all can do. Of course, we're not gonna cover it all in this short uh, video that we're doing here, but we'll cover at least a, hopefully enough to answer some of the questions and be able to tell the differences when you're looking for a GPR, a ground penetrating radar unit. All right, go ahead, Ken. Thanks. Um, this unit is a 1500. Uh, the difference between the RD 1100 and the RD 1500 is the 1100 is basically a locate and mark device. Uh, it produces line scans um, and you can go out there and put paint, put marks on the ground. The 1500 is a much more robust design, much more robust device in that it does line scans and grid scans as well. Okay, we have a grid set up here. Uh, simple 20 by 20 grid set up here uh, that uh, uh, we can do a grid scan and slice down through that data and see our utilities in the ground as they are. It's more um, beneficial to do a grid scan if you can because you can see that pipe making a nice long line in the ground and uh, gives you a better access to the data. Yeah, the final image is much more clear and what's there. And if there's multiple utilities, you can see it much better. You can see T's off and, and, and yep. things like that uh, a lot easier than uh, just doing lines. Now, this is uh, a unit based for utility locating, correct? Yeah, it's two Cables and pipes. Yeah, cables and pipes. It's 250 megahertz wide banded antenna. Uh, the wide banding gives us uh, the ability to look at smaller objects or bigger objects we can actually split split that signal into three different uh, levels in what's called frequency we can split that signal or we can see all uh, it gives us some control over the data so what's the depth range you can get with one of these uh in most conditions uh it will see down to uh 30 feet but uh in most soil conditions you won't see that far it's all dependent on the soil makeup uh, the type of soil that you have. If you have clay, clay is um, uh, difficult for a GPR signal to go through because it's a ma microwave band signal. It's progressing through, but clay, because it's uh, conductive, it eats that signal and turns it into heat. So we're in a saturated environment right now. It's been raining. We have a little bit of clay in the ground here. Uh, how deep do you think we can see a one inch line? Um, as we go down it's a cone shaped signal that goes down so it gets a, a you know weaker as it goes down because it's spreading okay. uh, but uh, a one inch line near the surface you'll see it very easily as it gets down around five or six yeah. feet it's going to get yeah. be more difficult and to it see. depends on the consistency consistency of the line right a, a solid steel pipe will give a much bolder signal yeah. than let's say a, a, a plastic pipe uh, okay all right well let's see what we got here so what are we going to do to start off? Are we just doing a line scan? Are we doing a well, grid scan? Initially, we always start, before we do a grid scan, we want to do a line scan uh, so that we can set our, our um, soil type and soil wetness. Uh, so we would just, just do a line scan, a quick line scan across a utility that uh, we want to cross that utility at 90 degrees so we get a nice hyperbola shape. Okay, so you're starting a new project. This yep. is project eight right there. Yep. And this is line two. Yep, um, line two. Okay. And uh, do you set your length or what's the length for? No, the length is going to be the uh, a result because we're going to push the cart. Okay, and it will come up automatically. And then uh, it's set to wet soil right now. Is that automatically set or do you preset that? No, I have preset that because of we know the soil's pretty okay. wet. <laughs> okay. Um, and, but with the enhanced version and stuff, can you change that later if you need to? In the utility suite level of the software, you can go in and edit all of the data. You can edit the, the gain, you can edit the uh, color scheme, and you can uh, fix the, the depth, uh, hyperbola fitting, uh, the depth of measurement. Okay, so that's the 1500 the model with the utility suite with software utility suite. added. Right. Okay, so that's the, uh, the, the higher unit. So we have GPS on this one. We don't get that with the 1100, correct? That's correct. All right, so screen went out there and just hit it to refresh it. Okay. 
All right. So basically with a line scan, uh, we know there's a utility in here. So we're gonna start, start our scan. When we start our scan, it goes into line scan mode and tells us basically to push the cart. Okay. As we move the cart, it builds our image. You can kind of see it drawing out there, much better live than on the video, but yeah. And you can see the hyperbola results for a line that we know where it is in here. Okay. All right, so that's a simple line scan that's mode, and that can be scan. done on 1100 and a 1500. That's correct. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, both 1100 and 1500 come with a rechargeable battery, and that's mounted right there in the Pelican case. How long will that last? Um... Typically about four hours of constant use. Okay. Um, so if you need to work a full eight hours, you can buy extra batteries and, and just, just swap the battery. Swap it out by simply unplugging it, plugging the other one in. So inside both units, the 1100, 1500, you have an odometer in the wheel, correct? Yes. That keeps track of where it's going. That just needs to maintain contact to the ground all the time. That right rear wheel, yep. In order to draw out the image correctly. If you're in a, a, an environment where everything's like a cultivated field where it's bouncy and you're moving around, you're gonna get a bad image, right? A, a bad drawing coming up on it's, the screen? It's gonna be a fuzzier response. Okay, so sure. you, you want it to be pretty much flat ground if you can and then have the sled as close to the earth as possible? We want the antenna about one cardboard thickness above a concrete floor that's how you set okay. it so you want that antenna clo as close to the ground as possible so that you get as much energy as possible going into the ground rather than it bouncing out from under the cart and going off into space okay and then you'll the the image will be clearer off the utility yes okay and you'll get better depth measurement okay better, so better depth these are the base well. wheels that come with it there's some larger wheels if you're in a bigger or heavier environment this slightly larger yep okay all right so that was line scan, and uh, you have you can save that image as a JPEG or. Yep, I can save it. We can uh, export it out in a in a uh, uh, quick report via Wi-Fi through your phone and send it back to your office if you want. Okay, but that's only on the fifteen hundred, correct? Nope, that's on that's the eleven hundred as, well. as well. All right, so this is typically just a quick scan, trying to look. You know something's down there. You're just trying to look for it. You can do that with the eleven hundred and the fifteen hundred. Right. Okay. All right, so what's next? So next, if we want to, uh, typically we would uh, do our hyperbola fitting, which we're going to do our soil calculation. We're going to take this, and we're going to place it over our uh, hyperbola here, and we're going to adjust for the soil type. And we do that by uh, changing the... Now it says very wet soil. Very wet soil, and it's pretty close, and we can do the fine changes here. You're just trying here. to match that red line up to match the H-shaped Hy The hyperbola, hyperbola. On, the, okay. on the screen. That's pretty close. When we get done, we'll accept. You got, and you got the, I and, saw you had a depth reading there and no, a position. And it adjusts the depth of the, uh, okay. of the scan. All right, so this is how far you've scanned, zero feet, 10 feet, and then you have your depth over here on the uh, left side going down, four foot, eight foot, 12 foot. And what are you looking for there? You're looking for the top of the, the reflection? The top of the top hyperbola. So yep. the very top one would be right about there. You can cross-reference that to the left if you want, or you can put a cursor on it, right? Or zoom yeah, into it? Yeah, we can zoom in a little bit that wrong way. So... There we are. When we back the cart up, mm -hmm. it actually gives me a, a witness line. The witness line as to yep. positioning where you position. And where that line is, essentially is the utility is right under the center the line center of the cart. Right, the center of the cart. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. So let's move on to uh, doing a grid scan. All right. You just hit stop. And, and I'm going to go back. And then I'm going to exit line scan, and we're going to go for a grid scan. Office. With a grid scan, uh, we're in project number eight. We're doing grid scan number two. Uh, the grid size, we can choose between 10 foot by 10 foot, 20 foot by 20 foot, or 50 foot by 50 foot. Okay, so if I adjust the grid size and go down, you can see now we're at 10 foot by 10 foot. The squares get bigger. If I go up, there's 20 by 20, and there's 50 by 50. So you're just trying to push the cart to emulate the grid that you have on the screen. That's correct. 
Now, grid resolution is, right now it's set at two feet. That's essentially the width of the cart. So that you, uh, as you move, progress along your grid, you're gonna move that cart over just the cart width at two feet spacing. Okay. We can change that to one foot spacing, so you'd move half the move over half the cart and do your grid. It's a much oh, tighter, okay. tighter yeah. grid. So this is about two feet from one it's wheel to feet. the other. Yep. Okay. And of course we have our, our soil calculation which we did. Our very wet soil is now set at uh, 55. Okay, where do you want to okay. start this grid scan? Okay, we're gonna start up here in the corner. You always start in the corner? Always start in a corner. And it's, it, so you want to start at the same corner that it's telling you to start at on the screen? Well, or? what it shows you on the screen will be a representation. If I hit start, mm -hmm. um, it's going to give me a representation of what's... It's, it's loading. I've, I've set my parameters. Now it's, now I'm in... So there's your little cart right there. Right. Okay. So it's telling you to start in the lower left-hand corner. Lower left-hand corner. So when I move over, I'm going to move over to my right. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and go from zero to 20 feet on our first scan. Yep, I'm gonna push start. Push start. And? I heard a little beep there letting you know that you're ready to go. And you just push it about the same speed you would mow a lawn. Yep. Okay. And it will beep at you when you reach when the 20 feet. When you reach 20 feet. So you don't have to push anything, but when you know the beep's there, you can pull it back and start your next you one. Pull huh? it back, move it over. Move it over feet. the two feet and do it again. And hit start. So you line up your back you wheels to where you your 20 feet is there and yep. do the 20 feet and again. Progress the next one. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get all that done here. Okay. So we're going to go all in one direction and then we're going to turn, turn back and to that exact same corner. And go this way. Okay. And go the other direction. Okay. And so in the end you end up with how many... Uh, you go 10 times both ways, about? Right, 10 times each way. Okay. Yep. And that's going to hatch it together or stitch it together. and The, the software, uh, on the, the firmware on the machine, will stitch that together into what's called slice view, which allows you to look at the plan view down from the top and slice down through that data so you can see your utilities. Okay. What's the next one? Uh, we can do what's called a long line scan and be able to slice, create the slice views just the same. Without doing the grid, you're just, but you're grid. utilizing. We're doing sort of a grid. We're just doing it in a single continuous line scan and we'll zigzag back and forth. And um, you have to have the external GPS to be able to capture that data. How accurate is that GPS? Uh, it's about a third of a meter or about a foot okay. uh, accuracy. Of course, it's dependent on the number of satellites you have and right, so on. Right, right. But at least you don't have to lay out the rope. You don't have to plan out your grid. You can nope, just you roll can just that anywhere you want. And if you're looking for roots around a tree, you can go around, go around the tree. The you just start pushing, right? That's right. Okay. And that you just keep pushing. You don't have to stop. You don't have to hit stop. You know, you nope. just keep going and the GPS will track where you're going with it and be able to do the and same kind of... the software kinda... will take that GPS information and weave it into the slice view. Okay. Uh, the next level is the enhanced kit, the enhancement kit, where you actually enhance the unit. It increases the memory <coughs> from uh, a single project to nine projects. Um, okay. So you have a lot more memory uh, available to you uh, in an enhanced unit. Okay. Uh, you also, in an, uh, the base level, the output is screenshots. Okay. In the enhanced unit, the output is now the raw <laughs> GPR data that you bring into the PC software Echo Project. So that special software, do you have? Is it on a thumb drive? It's on a thumb and drive. And you have yeah. to plug that into the the side over here, or? Nope, that's okay. Uh, What's this, this for? This is then? for bringing the. You have a USB port. You're going to plug in a, a USB memory stick into this. You'll pull the data off of this onto the. It'll automatically load the data off. Okay. Uh, onto that thumb drive. You'll take that to your computer with the Echo Project software plugged in into that computer. It has to maintain plugged into the, the PC, uh, but you're going to download that those files off of the machine onto the computer and open them up in the Echo Project okay. software. Is this weatherproof or? IP65. So you can be out in the rain and use it? A light rain. You, obviously it's a, it's a sensitive electronic piece of equipment. 
you don't want water to get inside so uh, if it's un if you're uncomfortable it's uncomfortable okay it's a good way to think of it um, it is IP65 so it will do fairly well but I wouldn't pressure wash it uh, a light rain is is certainly fine <laughs>